Um, in this video, we're going to look at how to use congruence to prove certain facts about particular shapes and so on. And um, we're going to be using the four main ones that we discussed last time around. So remember, we looked at um, side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, 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 and right angle, hypotenuse, side. So we're going to use that in a couple of examples. And I'm going to tell you how to structure a proof or an argument. So let's get into it then. Okay, so let's look at um, a question. Okay, so let's read it first. So it says PQRS is a square. So PQRS. Now, by the way, whenever they refer to a shape and they give the letters of the corner, like so, so PQRS, then the letters will make the corners in a they'll either go clockwise or anti-clockwise round. So it's never like P, Q, R, S like that. It'll be the same way round a shape, if that makes sense. So P, Q, R, S, you can see the letters go anti-clockwise round the shape. So <clears throat> they always go round the shape like that. That's just good, a good thing to know. So they don't crisscross, that's the important thing. Okay, so let's carry on reading it. So it says PQRS is square. M is the midpoint of PQ. So midpoint means in the middle. So this point here is in the middle of PQ. And N is the midpoint of RQ. So there's N, so it's in the middle of RQ. And it is a square. Okay, so it says prove that SN, so S to N, so the length S to N, so this side here, is the same as R to M, so this side here. Okay, so we need to prove that these two green lines are the same length. Now, the thing is, though, we're not going to be using Pythagoras or Sokotoa or, or cosine rule, sine rule, or any of those rules. The one thing I really love about congruence is just like basic arguments as little sentences, really. And that's all we're going to be doing. Okay, so we're going to try and prove that SN is the same length as RM. Now, we're going to need to use congruence, so we're going to use one of these here, or maybe it could, sometimes it could be two of these here, but we're going to use one of these as our argument to show why SN is the same length as RM. Now, what we need to do, first of all, is let's look at SN and try and incorporate a triangle around that somehow. And the obvious one that I can think of is SNR. So I'm, what I do always do is I do a little sketch of a triangle that incorporates that side there. So I'm going to use the obvious one, S, N, R. So here's a triangle, S, N, R. Okay, S, N, R. And then let's do the same thing. I always sketch these little triangles on the side somewhere. Let's try and do another triangle that incorporates the length R, M. Okay, and the obvious one is R, M, Q. So let's kind of do that here. So this is R, M, Q. And then what I try and do is I try and fill in any bits of information that we know for definite, okay? And we, by the way, what we're doing, because we're proving that SN is the same length as RM, we can't assume that they are the same length at the moment. So we, we just pretend, for example, that for now, we don't know if SN and RM are the same length. We don't know that at all, okay? So what do we know? Okay, first of all, it's a square. So that means this side SR must be the same length as RQ. So I'm going to put a dash here and a dash here. And I'm going to write that down as well because that's important. So SR equals RQ. And the reason is because it's a square. So sides of square have the same length. So I'm going to write that down. Oops. And by the way, you get marks for writing things down. So first of all, we've got a side. Okay, actually, let me do that in a different colored letter. So we've got a side. So a different colored pen, sorry, I meant to say. Okay, and then because it's a square, let's stick to squares at the moment. The angle in the corner has to be a right angle. So this is a right angle here. 
and this is the right angle here. So the way to do that is you could say angle and the corner would be SRN. So SRN. So remember, you kind of joined it up. So SRN makes that corner equals angle uh, RQM. So RQM and and again, we're going to put the reason here. So should, what I should have done is move this down a little bit. So it's because um, angles in a, angles in the corner of a square are right angles. So uh, angles in corner square are 90 degrees. Now, you don't need to write loads. I'm probably writing more than I should do. Okay. And the other thing is this. Because... M is in the middle of PQ, then an N is in the middle of RQ. Because RQ is the same length as PQ, if you half it, then MQ must be the same length as NR because they're both in the middle. So I can put two dashes here, two dashes there. So I'm gonna, going to put RN equals mq because they're both midpoints because because it's a square and m and n are midpoints okay so i really apologize for the horrible handwriting but okay so because it's a square and s r and r all the sides are the same length on a square and m and n are the midpoints that means Rn, this side here, must be the same length as this side here. Now, look at what we have here. So we have the following. We have side that matches each other. And then we have an angle that matches each other. So we have an angle. And then we've got a final side that matches each other. This one here. So what do we have here? Well, we have the following. We have angle, sorry, not angle, sorry, side, angle, side. So we've got that scenario here. Look, we've got the side that definitely matches each other. We've got the angle that definitely matches each other. And we've got another side coming off this. Remember, the angle has to be between those two sides. And these two sides here, the one with the two dashes match each other here. So we have side, angle, side. Okay, so what does that mean about these two triangles? Well, that must mean they are congruent. So we can now start putting our argument together. So we can say because of side angle side, triangle uh, SRN, so I'm abbreviating it. So if you draw, instead of writing a little, writing the word triangle, if you just draw a little triangle, triangle SRN, now, this is a new symbol. Three lines means congruent to triangle RQM. So what I'm saying is that because we've got side angle side, this triangle must be congruent to this, this triangle. They must be the same triangle. Therefore, oops, I need to learn how to spell. Therefore, because these two triangles are congruent, that what we're saying is that both triangles are are the same. So that means SN must equal RM. And we've proved it. That's your proof. Okay. Now, I know it seems ridiculous because you've got a right angle triangle. So why bother doing all of this stuff? But um, this is like a very simple argument, really. It's very straightforward. What we've said is the following. We know for definite that this side matches that side. This angle matches this angle. This side matches this side. And because of that, we use type of congruence number one. We've used side angle side to say that these two triangles are the same. And because they are the same triangle, that means this side must be the same length as this side because we've just proved by this argument that they're the same side, sorry, same triangle. So if they're the same triangle, then these two lengths must be the same. Hence, we've proved it. Now, if this was a test, 
you'd get marks for writing this down and then writing something like this and then this is the conclusion okay so I hope that kind of makes sense let's look at a slightly different one okay so this is a slightly I would say slightly harder question right we have two squares so we've got this trying this square sorry a b okay this is written wrong it should be a b g f oh no it's written right so a b g f that's this square on the left and then we've got a e d c that's the square on the right so we've got two squares and then there's this triangle drawn in the gap between those two squares Okay, we don't know anything about the lengths or anything like that, but we are told that these two are squares. And we have to prove that the triangle ABE, so ABE, is congruent, so is identical to CFA. C, okay, in a minute I'm going to draw those two. Actually, should I draw it now? So let me draw it now. Okay, so we have to prove that the triangle made by joining the corners A, B, E, so that's this triangle here, is the same as the triangles drawn made using these corners, so C, okay this is going to be hard to do, C, F, so C to F, okay C to F is there, to A, oops, So C to F to A and down again. So we have to prove now this is really badly drawn. I do apologize. It's hard to do it with the tablet. Um, we have to prove that these two triangles that I've just drawn are congruent. Remember congruent means identical to each other. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? Right, first of all, let me clear all this. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna put in some dashes and so on. So because this is a square, the sides of the square are the same length, so I'm going to put one dash on all of these here because they're the same length. And then because this is a square but it's a larger square, I'm going to put two dashes to say that all these lengths are the same. Now, because this question is a bit tricky, I always, always draw these two triangles out separately somewhere else. So what I'm going to do is those two triangles that I highlighted a moment ago, I'm going to draw them here. So here's the first one. So this is A, B, E. This is A. Okay, let me do that, do that bigger. So this is A, B, E. And then what was the other one? It was C, F, A. So I'm going to do that here. So C, F, A. Oops, it doesn't look like a right angle triangle, does it? Okay, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's a sketch anyway. So C, F, A. Now, we have to prove that these two triangles are the same triangle. So how do we do that? Okay, so first of all, let's put some markings on these triangles here. Okay, so A, B has got one dash on it. So let's put one dash there. And then A, F has got one dash on it. So let's put one dash on here. So if you look, AF is that side there. And I've just put one dash on the AF here. And then AB has got one dash here. So what we've done so far is we've got one clue already. So we know that the side AB equals AF. And you want to give a bit of a reason. So you probably, you don't, by the way, these questions, you don't need to write paragraphs and paragraphs, but just in like a little kind of short paragraph here, I would say because they're part of the same square. So I'd say A, B and A, F are part of the same square, so therefore they're the same length. Okay, so I'd probably write something like that there. But what we, in, in essence, is what we have got a side. Okay, so if this was an exam question, which, is it, which it is, I'd put A, B equals A, F because they're part of the same square, and then therefore you've got a side. Okay. Right, and we can do the same thing again, because AC has got two dashes on it, so here's AC, two dashes, and AE has got two dashes on it, so AE, so we can say that AC equals AE, because they're part of the same square, so I'd write that here, part of the same square, part of same square, okay, but 
I'm sorry, it's not enough space for me to write, but we've got another side. So we've got another side. Okay, now what we need to think about is which one of these is going to apply. So we've got like side angle side, which has got two sides in it, or side side side. Um, I, don't, I don't know much about the angles really. We don't know really much about the angles, but this is where the clever bit comes in. And um, okay, there's a tiny, tiny little bit of algebra here, okay? And it will all make sense in a minute. Okay, do you see this triangle in the middle? This angle here, I'm going to label it x, okay? Now, because this is a square on the left, this has to be a right angle, doesn't it? So that has to be a right angle. And because this is also a square, that has to be a right angle there, okay? Now, if you have a look, um, I don't actually care what that angle is, but if I look at this angle here, if I look at the angle, um, B, A, E, okay, well that would equal X add 90. Think about it logically, look, here's B, A, E, so this angle here, let me highlight it, this entire angle would be whatever that angle X is, which I don't care what it is, whatever it is, plus 90. That's how much that angle there would be. And by the way, you'd have to write this anyway. But then if I look at the corresponding sides, let me... So if I look at this triangle, this and this corner here, so if I look at the angle, uh, let me write here, angle uh, F, sorry, C, A, F, okay. And um, if I look at that angle there, well, that would also be X at 90. Think about it logically. Look, I'm going to highlight it as well again. Because, look, CAF is this one here. So that would also be whatever X is at 90. Now, the thing is, though, this is the logic behind it. Because we don't know what X is, but that value of X is the same for both for both calculations because you just take x and you add 90 and you either get this angle or this angle so they both would be the same so you've just proven without even actually knowing what that angle in the corner is that these two angles are the same so i'm going to write that here i might need to write over this so i'm going to write it we've just proven that angle i'll tell you what i'm going to tell you the shorthand notation c a f if you put a little triangle above the Sorry, little kind of this symbol here above the center letter, that means angle, equals B A E. So you've just proven that the angle here in the corners are the same. Now look at what we have. We have one side matches another side, one side matches another side, and then we've just proven with a tiny little bit of algebra that these two angles have to be the same and that angle is between those two sides therefore we have side angle side so we've got so we can say the following because of side angle side now i'm going to just put sas but you would need to write side angle side i think so because of side angle side we've just proven that triangle uh, what was the true triangles? A, B, E is congruent. So remember, it's three lines for congruent. Congruent to triangle uh, A, C, F. Okay, and there you go. You have just proven that those two triangles are congruent. Okay, and I hope that kind of makes sense. There's a tiny little bit of algebra involved, but it's really no more than like side angle side and so on. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, this is actually question number 12 from the exercise that I'm going to get you to do from Caboodle. So this is question number 12, and it's a bit of a tricky one because there's no kind of shapes drawn for us. Okay, so let's kind of read what it says. This is A, B, C, D is a quadrilateral, and it just says quadrilateral, so we don't know if it's a rhombus or a square or, you know, a rectangle or a trapezium, just a four-sided shape. 
And then it says there's a, there's a line that goes through A, so the corner A, wherever that is, and it's parallel to the side BC, and it meets DC at a point X. And then it says, now this is, you not, might not have seen this before, but this means the angle, that symbol there means angle in the corner D equals the angle in the corner C. And prove that there's triangle ADX is isosceles. Now this is quite tricky. Now let's kind of draw this. So what I'm going to do is because there's some parallel line stuff going on, I'm going to put BC is the, f actually let's do it like this. So let's put A there. B there, C there, and let's whack D down there. So this is A, B, C, D. Let's draw a nice big diagram like this. Okay. And this is our quadrilateral. So any old four-sided shape would do. Okay. So this is our A, B, C, D. Remember, these letters are the corners of the quadrilateral. And they all need to go the same way around. So they either go clockwise round or anti-clockwise round the shape. Okay, so let's clear some of this annotation. Okay, so what, it's, what does it say? First of all, there's a line that goes through A, which is parallel to BC. So let's draw that line first of all. So here's the corner A. And it needs to be parallel to this top side here. So let's try and draw that. Okay, I think I've done a good job there, actually. This, so this is the... This is the line they're on about that goes through A. So here it is going through A. And it's got to be parallel to this top side. Now, lo and behold, this line that I've just drawn meets DC. So meets just mean well, obviously meets means it crosses DC at the point X. So here is the point X. So that dot there is the point at which uh, that line that I've just drawn meets DC. Okay, so what it's asking us to prove is prove that the triangle, that symbol means triangle because it's literally just a picture of a triangle, ADX, so this ADX, let me highlight this so you can see it a bit better. So ADX, you're going to need to prove that this triangle is isosceles. Now, also, I forgot to put in some other information. Okay. It says also that the angle at the corner D, so this angle here, is the same as this angle here. Okay, now, how do we go about proving that this triangle ADX is isosceles? Well, we just need to know things, something about isosceles triangles. What do we know about isosceles triangles? Okay, two sides the same length. Two angles at the bottom have to be the same. So if we can prove one of those scenarios that two sides are the same length, or the two angles are the same, then we know it's got to be isosceles. Okay, so I don't know anything about the sides. It doesn't say what type of quadrilateral it is. So we don't know anything about AD or BC or anything like that at all. So we can't make any assumptions there. But we are told something about these angles here. Now, if you remember your parallel lines, if you have two parallel lines like this, then you know this angle has to be the same as this angle. And lo and behold, we have that here. Look, BC, AX are parallel and this third line crosses them. So this angle here must be the same as C. So we can say angle um, AXD has to equal B, okay, I really should write the word angle because that's what it means. Angle. In the future, I'm just going to use this symbol here. Or you should use that symbol there. It means angle. Or you can write it like this. Angle AXP. So that means angle AXD. That means angle AXD. A bit old-fashioned. But angle, uh, what was it? Angle equals angle BCX. B c x okay and the reason for that is because they're corresponding because so you need to write that here corresponding angles now again you don't need to write paragraphs but you just need to write a little neat little sentence to say why they're the same it's because because they're parallel and these two lines are corresponding angles so you need to say that okay now look we have a triangle 
that has two angles which are the same. Therefore, it must be an isosceles. So look, because because C is the same as this angle here, and we're told that D and C are the same, so this angle is also the same. Look, we've got these two angles are the same, so because angle, actually I'm going to write it like this, so ADX is the same now as AXD, therefore um, triangle ADX must be isosceles. Now, you can write a bit more, you can sort of maybe say why isosceles, because um, you probably should write that here, but you, you want to say that isosceles and triangles have two angles which are the same, and therefore it has to be isosceles. And you've just proven it. And then actually you've proved something else as well, because they're isosceles, then that length must be the same as that length, which must be the same as that, that length. So you could also say, but we don't need to now, but we can say that AD equals AX, which equals BC. So you've just proven that. So this here is probably a trapezium, actually. It is a trapezium. Lo and behold, it's a trapezium because of um, that angle is the same as that angle. Now, again, there may be, you might have spotted a different way to the way I've done it. Uh, this there might be another way, another argument, um, but it's um, that that proof I do like because there's not much kind of calculation. Sorry, there's not much algebra involved at all, and I hope that kind of makes sense. Really, the thing I love about congruence is there's no kind of algebra involved. It's just basically saying, "Oh, look, this side, this angle matches that one because they're corresponding," and um, because you got two angles which are the same, therefore it's isosceles. But you do need to write these things down. So whenever you use proof, okay, whenever you use proof like the following, you've got to say why two things are the same and a short little reason, okay? Thank you very much for watching, guys. It's, I've known this video has been very long, but uh, please now have a go at some of those questions from the textbook. As many as possible, please, okay? Thank you very much, everyone.